Hello. I want to talk about the future of schools and learning. You know, um, it's very likely that in 10 years from now, uh, the job that you will have does not exist today. So let me say that one more time. So that in 10 years from now, in the future, the job that you have will probably not exist today. It'll be a new job. And if you were young, this is particularly true. The job that you will have has not been invented yet. The job title will be new. If you're studying something in university, it's probably not what you're going to be doing with your life in 10 years. That's because we're using technology to make up whole new occupations. Things like artificial intelligence, robotics will also change how we spend our time making money. And while there are many, many professions that will generally remain, what we do in that profession is likely to change in 10 years, and especially in 20 years. So as we train for these new occupations, schooling becomes more and more important. Learning becomes more and more important. And it doesn't matter really how old you are or how much you already know, how much you've mastered something already. We're headed in a direction where everybody is going to be a newbie. So 20 year olds, millennials, at this point, when they're 20s, they can say very confidently that they are digital natives. They're native to this new realm of technology. But in fact, they're not really. They're only native to this time. In 10 years from now, in 20 years from now, if you were 20 years old, you will not be native to the technology that will be coming next. You won't be native to the augmented reality mirror world that we're making. You won't be native to the world of ubiquitous AI. And in that sense, you'll be in the same place that older people are today, where you're going to be unfamiliar. You're going to be a newbie. So we're all going to be newbies in our lives, and we're all especially going to be new newbies in the next 10 years and 20 years. And so we have to learn how to become really good at learning things, because we're going to have lifelong learning. And the way we do that is that we want to, do, to adopt a method of learning called deliberate practice, falling forward or failing forward, where you actually understand in order to learn, you have to make mistakes. In order to learn, you have to try things that aren't going to work. In order to learn, you actually have to do things for the first time, which means you're probably not going to work. You have to do things for the second time, and they still may not work. And you have to keep doing things for the first time. You have to keep doing things that you're not really good at. And that idea of failing forward is instrumental and it's important, not just for individuals, but also for organizations. And so the idea that we're going to have lifelong learning is a central concept of the future. And um, what we really want to have a lifelong learning, what we want to be learning all our life, is how to learn. This becomes the golden, instrumental, foundational thing is learning how to learn. And the bad news is, is that very few of us, including me, really understand how we learn best ourselves. I and mean, I don't know how I learn best. I have not been taught the best way for me to learn a language. I can maybe try to learn a language, but I actually don't know what the best way is for me. I don't know the best way for me to learn a new physical skill. I don't know the best way for me to learn a new intellectual discipline. I can try to learn them on my own, but I'm going blindly. I don't really know. What we really want to have is a course, a school, program to take us through to help us measure and learn and use metrics and evidence to actually guide us as we learn how to learn. 
you know, it's very possible that we can learn many things without learning how to learn. We can learn many things almost by accident. We can learn many things just simply by trying hard. But that's not necessarily the best way to learn. We haven't optimized it. And that's what we're talking about is how do we optimize my own learning? How do we optimize your learning? How do we optimize the learning for many people at scale? And of course, what we know from the research already, two things. One is that there are many different types of learning, many different ways to learn that, that you don't learn a language the same way that you learn to ride a bicycle. You don't learn physics the same way you learn uh, how to sail a boat. And so there are so many different types of learning that we're going to encounter in our own life that we have to kind of prepare for as many of them as we can. And secondly, even more importantly, everybody has a slightly different way of learning. That We're not uniform. There, there's not a standard way because of the mixes of our own personalities, our own temperament, our own genetics, we tend to learn a little differently and we tend as individuals to learn better in some ways or faster in some ways and slower than other ways. And of course, the way in which we may want to optimize learning in any direction may also vary. And so what we really want to have is a world and technologies that will allow us to personalize that program to really tailor it to us specifically. Of course, there will be many things that we'll share, and there might be certain techniques that can be reused, but to optimize, really, to really optimize the collective capabilities of many, many people learning, we want to optimize them in a very personalized way. So the programs that we're going to invent to address this lifelong learning and learning how to learn at their best, will be optimized for us through our own learning paces at different things, at different times, and at different points of our life, because it's going to happen all our life. And so the school, as we mentioned, schools as this mechanism that helps us learn, will be very varied. I don't imagine that we're going to go away with a classroom, meaning a room full of people, a room full of students who are learning together because collaborative learning can be very, very powerful. And it's also efficient. But at the same time, we have many other new types of learning and learning environments that will be used in addition to that classroom. And of course, the classrooms themselves can change. Very few of the current models will go away because they all can be useful at some point. What we're going to see in the future of schools is an increasing variety of different ways to learn, depending on what it is that we're learning, when we're learning it, and who we are. So in addition to a classroom, we have the online video world. And more and more people today are learning how to do an amazing variety of things that we wouldn't have thought of that would work on video, but are already being used. Surgeons are learning how to do new surgery by watching YouTube. Programmers these days, when they have a problem, they don't typically even Google something. They go to a YouTube, they see someone else going through the code, talking about it, annotating it. And uh, welding, I learned how to weld watching YouTube videos. That's a kind of a, an unconventional, surprising, unexpected thing. But in fact, you can learn an awful lot by watching people do things. So this mass appeal of the medium of moving pictures is one indication of where we're going with the future of schools. Um, one of the things that we have already discovered about the smart glasses in the worlds of augmented reality, what I call the mirror world, is that this is made for learning. This is a teaching medium par excellence. It's just fantastic. And it's partly because something happens when we're in the three dimensions where we're engaged. It's a visceral. It works on a different part of our brains. It's on the back of our brains. It's much more primitive in some ways. But because of that, it can be very deeply rooted. And when we are just as, just as watching someone 
do something on YouTube, but when we're there and we can actually have a three-dimensional spatial view, and maybe we can actually have shadow hands where we're going to follow the master's hands as he or she is guiding us in surgery or welding or even assembling a molecule in chemistry or walking through a heart together with the doctor. That is incredibly powerful. And, and, and I think we're going to be surprised by how important this media will be besides games and the entertainment, but as a training and teaching medium. And, and right now, most of the advances in the augmented reality are happening in enterprise at work, where people are using them to get jobs done in a warehouse or in repair work or um, th things like surgery. And that suggests to me that in the future, in 10 years and 20 years, a lot of what we learn in this lifelong journey will be learned at work while we are working. And in many ways, um, corporations or companies will become to see as part of their job is training people, helping them learn, because they're going to be hiring people to do things that nobody knows how to do. They're going to be hiring people who are the first person to have this job. And so part of what is going to be going on is helping them learn how to learn. Because in some senses, nobody knows what it is. This is happening already in aug uh, augmented reality and artificial intelligence. There are no experts. We don't know what it is. It's very hard to kind of hire an AI expert because there aren't any. So you have to kind of train one. You have to kind of grow one. And so these institutions, part of their way they, they operate, part of, part, of, part of their thing that they're selling is really teaching the employees what that job is. And so a lot of this lifelong learning is going to happen within the confines of what we would call work, a job. Part of your job is going to be the learning the new thing. And so Again, we come back to sometimes it's going to happen online, sometimes it'll happen in augmented reality, sometimes it'll happen in a classroom, sometimes it'll happen with a teacher, sometimes it'll happen with a guide on the side, sometimes it'll happen with your peers, your classmates, and some will happen just by yourself. So we're increasing the variety and numbers of ways in which we can learn and have schooling. And so school will again, there will be classrooms, there will be campuses, because what happens in colleges is not just about learning stuff and learning how to do things. There's a lot of social dynamics. Part of what you learn is networking, how to relate to other people. All those things are still valuable. So the face-to-face -face interaction will continue to be very, very important. So we'll have places where that happens. But in addition to them, we're also going to have many other varieties and even in those places and campuses where there are classrooms they will be augmented by these other technologies of smart glasses of shadow and mirror worlds of digital twins of courses that are made by users and uploaded of having the guide on the side take you through and try to accelerate your own learning so all these things will happen even within a classroom. And so um, uh, my hope is that within 10 or 20 years, the thing that you graduate from high school with, the, 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 the mark, the, 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 the sort of the diploma that you have when you graduate is that you have been taught, you have learned how to learn. You know yourself to some approximation about how you best learn a language, an intellectual skill, a physical talent, something like that you have a pretty good sense of how many hours of rest you need between a repetition, of whether you're an orally based or textual based or visually based learner, all these kinds of things that vary from person to person and task to task, that you will come equipped and you, your diploma will be that you have the ability to learn 
for the rest of your life because for the rest of your life you're going to be a newbie learning all these new things learning how technology works becoming techno literate picking up the skills of understanding in general how the world works how technology works how we want to learn and becoming equipped with the really the only skill that we need which is learning how to learn so thank you